Today is a cross-platform mobile app development for uh, enterprises especially. So if you can see the tagline also, it says build awesome mobile apps for your business. So we are looking mainly to garner only uh, enterprises and not specially games or any other section there. So if you see our API uh, also, it will be mainly uh, looking at uh, uh, enterprises and those type of stuff like HTTPs and logging and all that aspects. So I'll go forward what is happening in, pre in the present world right now, mobile is everywhere. So you, if you see your every, every of all your pockets will have a mobile and uh, uh, mobile is not ju just in the cities, it's in the villages and every place you can find mobiles. So enterprises are looking to cash into this and uh, try to improve their uh, sales and revenue based on the mobiles here. So and uh, the technological advances in mobile is as equivalent to a laptop right now. If you see a phone, uh, which was pretty bad, like Nokia's in the uh, earlier and earlier decade, is now uh, almost now an iPhone is almost equivalent to a MacBook. You can say you can do most of your actions which you're doing on an iPhone, on the MacBook also. So, uh, uh, so what are enterprises looking at? They're looking to reduce costs, increase their uh, priorities, and uh, uh, anyway, the the main idea is reduce the cost and try to uh, make quicker decisions. So that's that's what enterprises want. So um, how is this done? So right now, mobile application development. How many mobile app developers here? Most of them, right? So mobile application development, you would know that it's not as easy. It's not like learning JavaScript or learning any single language. So if you see mobiles right now in the present world, there are four major mobile applications. One is iOS, Android, BlackBerry, and Windows. So Developing for all these four OSs is quite difficult. So when you, what you do is you start up with an application and you develop once, and uh, you think, okay, I'm done. I've, I've created this awesome app right now. But then the customer comes and tells you, what is this? You've just done it for iOS. Where is the Android app? So and then next you would, uh, though, though right now you might not be developing for BlackBerry and Windows, some point of time it will come in. Some point of time it will come that you have to develop for BlackBerry and Windows as it doesn't have that much popularity right now. So this is the major hindrance which uh, mobile developers face right now uh, when developing for mobiles. And testing on multiple devices. Uh, you would have, you need to have a, a very good set of devices with you so that you can test your app running. So you need an iPhone, you need an Android, you need a Blackberry, you need a Windows phone, and this increases your cost. As an enterprise, you wouldn't want your cost to increase uh, exponentially so that you have to test once per one small application. So, and next is uh, hiring developers. So what happens, you have to hire multiple developers. You can't just develop, you can't have one person developing uh, uh, only for iOS. You have to uh, hire another person who, has, who knows Android. You have to hire another person who knows Blackberry. And these are different people. And uh, as an enterprise, you'd have to pay them separately. And this, this is difficult for an enterprise. And consider if it's a startup, then it becomes even more difficult. And uh, if you see uh, update, updating an app within, uh, updating an app for an, uh, uh, separately considered for Apple. So if you have to update an app, it says that you have you can update only once in one month, and then uh, you have that limitation. In Android, though, it is possible to update. Uh, so uh, updating an app is difficult. And as an enterprise, you wouldn't want your app to be limited. You would every your decisions will change so quickly that you can't update your app. Uh, at the pace in which uh, Apple allows you or Android allows you. And uh, so, yeah, so most of the time what happens is your team would start looking like this and uh, they would, uh, they'll be saying that, no, I can't do this, this is not possible for me, and I'll start, and then most of your team will say, I quit, that's all over. You don't want that to happen in your team, definitely. So this is where Mobly uh, helps you. So we have uh, a few different uh, uh, a few things which uh, separate us. So we develop through HTML5, HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. So it is just a single programming language which you would learn. You don't have to learn Objective-C, or Java, or C-sharp, or Blackberry separately. Again, all the, there's no four different languages you have to learn. It's just one language, HTML5, you learn, which, which I wouldn't say you have to learn, which I guess you already know. So that's, that's you don't have to learn any language, actually. And Next is a full-fledged simulator, which is present within the browser. So testing, which I was saying that you have to test multiple on multiple devices and all that you need to have. So we, we have tried to remove that 
by having a simulator within our browser itself. I'll be showing a demo of all this. It's not just I'm saying things. I'll be showing a demo of all this so that you can have a clear idea. And it is a cross-platform development uh, across all four OSs. So you, uh, you, I think you, most of you will be knowing about PhoneGap and uh, Trigger. So it's almost similar, but we don't use PhoneGap uh, as our backend layer. We have our own native bridges which connect to the mobile layer. And uh, we, we have our own UI framework. We have a rich UI framework called Juicy, which, uh, which has responsive designs. And uh, we already have a, a about 50 controls, which you can directly drag and drop and use in your uh, uh, user interfaces. And uh, best of all, everything is on the cloud. So you don't have to download or s download a package or something like that. Accelerator mainly asks you to download some package and then run it as uh, an as application in your system. So that's, that's not where we are. So we run everything on the browser. So uh, everything uh, from, from the development till getting your app uh, on your mobile is done through the browser. So I'll be showing you a demo of how that is also possible. And, I have a uh, question for you. Yeah, please. Uh, usually developers prefer having a local development environment. Yes. Since you're good, I mean, you're providing a browser interface for the whole thing. That means we need to stay connected all the time, right? Yes. That's so, a Yeah, we have thought about that. And uh, we also have plugins, like command line plugins and Visual Studio plugin, Eclipse plugins. Which uh, which will help you so that you will I understand that so you will be you will like Eclipse more right so you will have to you want to work in Eclipse so we have those plugins also which you can use and you can there are many people who like command line tool they want to use their own notepads like uh, people in Mac they like TextMate Text Wranglers and all that so pe they they would want to use that so using command line tool you can do that okay so th this is the list of uh, native support which we have like camera contacts. HTTP logging, preferences, files, geolocation, messaging. So uh, all this is catered towards enterprises. And we already have uh, the, these connectors ready, which is all JavaScript-based connectors. So we connect to Zoho, Amazon, uh, Azure, Asana, StackMob, Parse. So all these are backend connectors ready so that you can push all your data to this connector and all your data would be stored in uh, these backend. Okay, let's uh, go to the demo. I'll show you a small de uh, demo of a uh, product. Okay, so this is uh, the user interface uh, which we have. This is the user page. So our whole idea is to make it social also. Uh, then, uh, so we don't want developing to be a boring job. So we want to make it social also so that the people can love what they're doing. So this is uh, Mobley presenter who has logged in. Uh, you can see that uh, his image is there and uh, you can see a list of numbers here at the bottom, which is cloud space used. We use App Engine as our backend. So App Engine uh, charges us uh, by uh, the amount of data we store it, the data we store in it, and the amount of uh, connections we make to the app, app Engine. So, so that is what we are also saying here. This is the amount of data which you have used in your project or in your space, and that is what we would be charging you uh, for also. So it's very transparent. We are not charging you for anything separate. I'll be going through the pricing details later. Okay, so this is the user space. So you can see here that the user has already uh, created two projects. So projects is nothing but your own uh, space as in a workspace of Eclipse. You can uh, create an analogy to that. So this is a project. You can see that there are two projects called Mobley Demo and another called Test Space. So I have created two, uh, space, uh, two projects as a demo right now. So I'll go ahead and uh, create a small app. This app will be uh, taking a photo of, uh, taking a photo and then sharing it across. That's it. This is a small application so that like, you can understand what the power is. So just click on Add Project. So here you can see that uh, we have a toggle switch which says Private and Public. So what Private and Public is is every project right now, if you create it, would be pr pr public. So any person can see your project, any person can view what you have done. It's almost like GitHub approach where you uh, create a repository and then uh, that repository will be public so that uh, others can also fork from that uh, repository. We have a forking uh, running within our system also so that, uh, you, so that you can see others' projects and then benefit from it. So I'll add this project now. 
So once it's uh, once the project is added, uh, the IDE opens up. So this is our IDE, which uh, shows that at the top left you can see PhotoShare is the name of the project which is running, and on the left side you can see a list of items, which is nothing but the files which you would have for your application. This is HTML, JavaScript, CSS, images, resources, which is nothing but some text files or XML files which you would need for your application, and packing. I would come to packing later. So packing is mainly for moving your application from the IDE to the mobile phone. Okay, so I'll click on this plus button, and I can see that these are the list of uh, items which I have. So the whole IDE is thought upon a lot and then designed in such a way so that it's very user friendly and uh, very developer centric, because we know that uh, there is not many uh, cloud uh, IDEs which are there in the world right now, which are which is like very uh, developer friendly. Most of them are quite old, and uh, it's not it's not usable actually. If you see, there are very few. I mean, Cloud Nine must be one of the few uh, IDs which is good enough right now. So uh, I would say one of this is one of the very good uh, IDs which you can use. So this this opens up a tab which already has a default template there, and uh, which which is nothing but HTML as uh, you can see. So uh, how you can uh, you can see here that everything is properly indented and color coded, and we have a list of controls here. So these are the list of many controls which we have: text, passwords, buttons, and then we have calendars, uh, date pickers, lists. So I already have uh, some code with me. I'll just uh, copy it. Okay. So now I've added this. I'll just uh, save this. So this is done. So uh, right now uh, I've created a HTML page. So as you all know, but uh, creating an HTML page is not enough. HTML page is just the user interface. You have to write some JavaScript so that the page actually works. So I'll create a JavaScript page also, which uh, it requires. So this is the JavaScript page. You can also see here that uh, we all we already have APIs like uh, alert, show progress, the capture, pick, choose pick. So these are APIs which will help you to. Uh, Directly use it. You can just uh, drag and drop an API, and then you can use it directly like that. But I already have some code for that also, so I'll just add it for now. Okay. Okay. So now both the files are added. So uh, as you would know, we have to actually add the JavaScript file to the HTML file so that it gets linked. So here also we have just uh, simplified that process. You don't have to type out that uh, script tag and all that stuff. You can just drag and drop the uh, JavaScript file, and it gets added uh, with the proper script tag and proper URL, so that you don't have you don't get confused about what is the URL and all that. Similarly, you can even add images if you have if you have any image in your uh, system. Also, you can just add that image first. You can go here and add the image, and then you can drag drop the image into the uh, tabs, and it will automatically put the URL for that. So now that I've done, uh, I've done both my pages. So there is a preview button here. I'll click on that preview button. So this preview button will open up the simulator which we have. So this is the simulator. You can see that the simulator looks almost like a phone. So this simulator uh, is developed fully through HTML5, and uh, so you can also see that right now it says the based on my application it says there are no images shared yet. So it just gives the, gives me an alert saying no images <coughs> shared. And I can also see logs. Here it says that uh, there are some logs, some two errors, which is try try to fetch the images, but the files does not exist for the image to be present. So these are loggings. I we the so these are the bottom things which you see here are nothing but the uh, phone which has been simulated here. So in the phone you would see contacts. In the phone you would have gallery. You can store files. You can store preferences, and you have geolocation. So you can simulate where your phone is. So right now. Uh, right now we are from Hyderabad, so it just says Hyderabad. So you can simulate where your phone is. Uh, you can say London, and then it, it'll your phone, your simulator would be in London, and all the information would be coming from London. Okay, and uh, so right now I can just go ahead. I can click on Add, so I can see that tab to choose. So I, I just clicked on tab to choose, and it's asking me whether I want to capture, choose, or cancel. So we have also integrated with the webcam which is present uh, with through html5 so i can just allow it so i can see that uh, webcam i can just take this is nothing but using the camera on your phone so 
the same thing I can just take a picture so the image has come up okay bar cam spelling has gone wrong fine so you can see that now the share has happened uh, so once switch share you can uh, so if I so now all the sharing has happened with storing in files so I can go to my files and then see that I have uh, internal storage and in my pack I have the share photo.txt where I see that my image is stored so I can click on this reload button again and the image is still there so this is how you can test everything on the uh, simulator itself and other than just testing this the major problem you would see on mobiles is okay I tested this on my phone now how does this going to, how is this going to look on the tablet how is this going to look on any other tablet actually so uh, for that also we have a solution here which is this uh, pop-up which we have here it says iPhone 4 right now I can change it to iPhone 5 and the size changes I can change it to iPad and the size automatically changes to iPad I can even rotate it so it rotates to landscape and you can see how the device would look in landscape and so I, I have a list of uh, items here which are the most famous mobile phones and all that and there are a list of uh, screen resolutions if that is what uh, suits you so and then uh, if I go back to iPhone 4 we also support few themes uh, we already by default as, as I said we give a UI framework uh, through which we work so we already have this is a default theme framework I have, so right, to write this we I have not even added a single line of CSS so to style anything here so I can just change it to wood theme and this changes to a wood type of background so we already by default provide a list of uh, see, uh, themes which we have so yeah and uh, there is one more so now that I've tested this so what you would you would say that it's fine it's working now uh, how do I you wouldn't want consider uh, it's an enterprise application where you fill a form or something like that right so this is just a demo right now so you fill a form and then you wouldn't want to come here and then fill a form in the small uh, box here but rather you would want to have a full-fledged uh, browser experience so I'll click on this web app here so it automatically uh, shows you the list of uh, sh applications which you have so I click on photo share and it says the same thing and uh, it's the same approach here so now you can see that it's the full screen view and you can uh, view your whole pro you can do all your work here consider you are working at your home and you want to see it on the phone then next you come back to your office and you want to see it in the office but in the office you don't want to see it on the phone right you can see it on the desktop rather so you can directly come here and log in and this is there you can see all your items okay so now I have seen everything and uh, I'm quite satisfied with uh, how what we have done on the phone now I'd want to move it to the mobile so moving to the mobile is very easy you don't have to connect your mobile to the system or anything so I'll just add something called a pack so a pack has column view which is nothing but the same five columns which are the same five items which are present on the left side so uh, since I know that I need to add an HTML these are the two files which I need for my app I'll just add it through the arrows there so once it's added I can uh, click on pack I'll just name it as barcamp so it's saving and it's the package is successful and you can see that it's automatically assigned to me this is an assign button here which is uh, hidden out so it, it says assign so it's automatically assigned to me now if I go to my phone I'll show you in the simulator which I have here so this is an iPhone simulator we have Mobly actually if any of you have an, uh, a smartphone device which is an Android or an iOS in which Mobly is present right now in the App Store also you can just go in there and download that application you can do whatever I'm doing here you can see that I, I'm logging in as user you can also log in at that user and see how the app is working so I'll just log in as that user So once it's logged in, it will get all the packs which are assigned to this user. So you can see that Barcamp is a pack which I just now created. So that pack has come up there. 
So this is the phone. This is uh, how you can see on, I guess, iPhone simulator you guys must be knowing. So if I click here, it's the same alert which, is, which came on the uh, simulator also, which came here. And you will get the same experience. Uh, the simulator which we have is a pixel to pixel matching to the iPhone which you see here. So this iPhone 4 which is developed by Apple is also exact pixel to pixel matching and the simulator which we have is also the same. So what you see on the simulator is what you get on the device. So I can say add. The same approach. So it gets added here and you can keep adding images. So this is just a demo to show how, what, how it works. So uh, this, this shows you how easy it is to move from uh, the ID, ID environment to the mobile fully. So you I do not have to connect any wire to phone, my phone or anything. You just have, need to have Mobly. So Mobly is a test client where I can uh, see what my application is going to be like. But this is not what I want. If I develop a, a app, like consider I want developing an app for a travel uh, travel approval or something like that, I wouldn't want to go to Mobly and then do my login and say travel approval and all that stuff. I would want my own app, right? It's called my own app, which is called travel approval. I would want that app to be present on the app store. So that is where build comes in. So you can see a build button here. So I have a build and it says what building is is it will create the whole application for you and send that uh, application to your mail. So from that mail, you can directly install it on your phone. So I'll, uh, I can see here that uh, I've added my app name and package name, which is, so I'll choose and then see that right now I've created on March 2nd, 4.59 PM, I've created this uh, build here. So it shows that I've created an Android build. I can refresh and it says that it's already queued. So uh, our servers have already got your request and it's processing it. So by the time it does, I'll just show you a few more things which we have. Uh, so if you come here, this is the user profile page. I was talking about forking, right? So you can go to this search button here. So what the search does is it uh, shows you all the projects which is present in our uh, system. So uh, the idea what we want to do is we, we, we don't want the users to stop because they can't, they don't know something. So uh, if the user doesn't know something, they can just go to, a, so go to our search and then search for anything. Consider we have a application which does to do. So I'll just search for to do's and it says that these many to do applications are done. And there is one application which is start. So which means that this is a featured application which has been developed by someone. So I can just come here and then click on this fork button. So before forking this button, I can even view it. So any public project is viewable by anyone. So I can just click on this sim, uh, button here because I wouldn't fork any project before I view it, right? Why would I fork a project if I don't see it? So it opens the same uh, simulator and you can see that uh, this is what that person has done. This is the to-do app which that person has created. He, uh, we can just create So save, close, ideas close. So yeah, I like this to-do app. Let's see how, uh, let's see, I want to see how it is done. So I can't see the code here, right? How it is created and all that stuff. So I just go back to my search and then I'll just fork it. So forking is a similar concept as you know about GitHub also. It is about just getting that project and then uh, developing from there. You can move it forward. So now it has been forked successfully. I can just go back to my user profile and refresh it. And you see that the to-do's application has come here also. So I can, uh, so this is my project now. This is my space, my uh, project. I can improve it if I want or I can use it as I need. So I, if I can open the ID. And then I can see that, okay, this is how it's done and this is the JavaScript for it. And so I can learn here how it has been done, what APIs it's used and all that stuff. So this Speaking is for APIs. If you want to leverage custom APIs, it's native to that uh, platform. Can we still do that here? So we have abstracted all that so that you don't have to write specific APIs for a particular OS. So if you want, 
to use a HTTP request like a GET request. You you don't you shouldn't use it like iOS one way, Android one way, BlackBerry one way, Windows one way, right? We have abstracted that so that you can use it in one way, and we we will handle sending it across in four different ways. That's fine, general things. But suppose there's a very specific API. Suppose I don't know, I think of an example, but um, suppose a UI package or something, a graphics package, and we want to access that. It's a specific API for Android. If I want to get access to that through mobile, could I do that? Okay, presently we don't have uh, the support for accessing specific APIs. Okay. So, because uh, that's where we have abstracted those levels so that you don't uh, directly go in and talk to the native layer. But we can think on that. Uh, we can think on that particular idea. But right now we don't have that. Excuse me. Uh, uh, so, we are having a feedback session right after this. So, I request all you guys to come to Astrid. Are there any overheads when using Mochi because it is of a generic nature as compared to when I'm making my API directly from the from that uh, native code that I provided? By overheads, uh, what do you mean? Means uh, does it take extra time to load? Or does it consume extra memory? But is there anything that I am? Uh, is my performance affected? Your I'm performance will definitely not be affected because HTML5 as a uh, technology has been well proven, and lots of uh, uh, mobile vendors are actually so using. Is there's an intermediate layer, I believe, which yes. is, uh, which is uh, uh, you know, corresponding to all the four different APIs. Yes. So because of an intermediate layer, are there any, because I'm mostly an Android programmer, I do not care about the rest of the stuff. Is there any extra overhead that I will be incurring because I'm using Mobile as compared to when I'm directly using my. Uh, there will definitely be an overhead. I mean, so much is the, that is very less. That's what I'm saying. HTML5 as a technology has improved so much that the amount of uh, lag which was happening before is not right uh, compar is not comparable to what it is right now so there is no overhead if you compare android and ios there is absolutely zero overhead but if you compare blackberry and windows since it's, they those are by default slightly slower uh, native operating systems they are slightly slower but android and ios there are absolutely no problems when it comes to html5 development i mean and as you are also saying that you don't care about the other three but it's. Uh, I would say that you should change that because uh, Android only developing for Android will not solve your purpose. You would come back. You would come someday. You will say that okay, I have to develop for iOS too. It will come across. But is it cost and overhead? You said we have to pay app engine something in the beginning. Yeah, I'll come to that. Okay, so I'm using I'm opening PhotoShare right now. So this is the pack which I had created. So let me see the build status. So it's done. So build status is saying it's completed. It's the build took only 34 <coughs> seconds to complete. So it, it uh, finished in 34 seconds and it also gives you a, a breakdown of what are those uh, sizes. So right now the app size is 1 MB and it shows us that Mobly has used this much and the user is this much and this much images were present. So this is just successful right now. So if I Go to my uh, mail. So this is my Gmail account. So I can also already see here that I have a build from Mobly which says Barcamp Android build. So I can click on that build and uh, you can see the same information here which is like how much time it took and there is an APK here. So this APK can be directly downloaded to your uh, mobile. If you are opening this Gmail in your mobile directly, I think you would already know that uh, you can directly install the application from that Gmail client itself. You don't have to actually move that APK to your memory card and all that stuff. You can directly install the application from the mobile itself. So uh, this is the power of uh, directly developing. So right now I can actually trigger four builds separately. I don't have to just build one. I can say I want all four. I just need to give the proper uh, parameters. I, I just need to give like for iOS there are a few uh, signing things. I need to give my provisioning profile and uh, the, my certificate. If that is given, that's it. So after that you will get four builds. So four. Uh, so right now I built an application in what 15 minutes, and these are running in four different OSs now. You don't. You're not limited to one OS. 
okay and uh, so this is the automated builds which we have and uh, the update cycle which i was saying is uh, so consider this is the html i have so uh, what happens consider you develop something and then you uh, find that okay i have to uh, no this is not working i have to change it it's no it's not proper so you would have to change it four ways now it's four different os's four changes and four multiple maintenance all that stuff right so i'll come here and then uh, so there's a button here which uh, has a value of share i'll say instead i want it to be called push so that's it i'll just go to my pack again and just pack it so this sends the information again to the cloud and when you come back to the phone let's go back and open it again so it starts fetching if you have uh, more information so you can see to do's has come up to do's has come up because we forked that project from uh, someone else so that project has come up here so it has been already assigned to me as i had forked that project so that says as an install pack and there is an update for bar camp so i'll update it so when i come here i'll say add and now it says push instead of share so this is how simple it is to change anything on your uh, system yeah, i have a question uh, each platform has got some specific uh, interaction with the device like uh, your android has got back buttons and home buttons and menu buttons uh, ios has just got one button there yes uh, so uh does this uh, way of developing match to all the ui standards of each yes. platform so i am showing you an ios <coughs> here yeah. i can open an android simulator also and show you but i think you already know that android simulator is pretty slow so i don't want to open it now so uh, if you press back button in your android phone it does the same action as clicking on this back button here which is nothing but the ios way of ios way of doing is put a back button at the top the android way of doing it is don't put back button or anything just click the button at the bottom so it is the same thing we we handle it saying that you just have to say dollar m dot go back that's it if you say go back then it just goes back based on what os it is so you don't have to take care about am i developing for ios or all that stuff okay so this is mobly uh, in a small nutshell uh, which uh, which is mainly cross platform mobile application development for the enterprises so any questions also i would like to take it now do you have any demo that displays the database part of the application when i am it's an erp i'll be handling lot of information forms and you know to share passing the information between different forms do you have any demo which can display that to you sir or any api is which you are handling you could not just go to pass it then check the line again what do you use as you were asking for so this what it does is it's a field service application where you can add uh, people who are going on the field for uh, to adding the jobs what they have to do and all that so we have already connected this to parse so uh, parse is acting as a back end here right now so that uh, it can talk so i'll just log in what's the password
so it says it shows you those uh, what are today's jobs and uh, upcoming jobs and all that so i can so this is uh, this is for the person who is viewing so this is the person who has gone in the field to see now if i want to uh, make it as a the person who is actually going to add the job Yes, all data is stored. We don't have any local data. Everything is on the cloud. All the applications which are developed are on cloud. And regarding that app engine, which I was saying, right? So we we are using like, you can use AWS also as your backend, right? For cloud, so we are using app engine, Google app engine as a back backend. So what Google app engine charges us for using uh, the app engine is the data information which we are storing on it and the number of uh, calls which we make to its data store. So uh, that is exactly the same thing which we are also charging for. So if you go to your user profile, you can see that this is the information which you have used. You have a capacity of 50 MB which is here. For a free user, it is a 50 MB capacity. And you have used only 0 0.026. Right now, I have four projects. And these four projects add images and all that stuff, right? So until now, we just use 0 0.026 MB. And I can go here uh, if I want to see more stats. So this shows you the stats. And it shows that the, the bandwidth used right at the bottom. So bandwidth is used. Bandwidth used is nothing but the number of calls which you have made to the data store. So you can see that HTML has been uh, called for 1.85 1, 1. Uh, MB. And based on that, that's the same. So that is a capacity of 500 MB for that, so for a free user. So if you want to upgrade, uh, we have uh, So this is the pricing plan for the community. So community is free, which gets unlimited public projects, one private project, 50 MB of file storage, 500 MB of uh, bandwidth and then there's a business package which has five private projects which has 34.95 dollars and uh, there's an enterprise which has unlimited private and public projects in for which you can just contact us and we can talk about the uh, finance and all that stuff per month per month, per month. Per month. yeah okay i have a question so where does my source code uh, Where does it reside? Your source code? Amazon S3, if I'm going with Amazon? Yes. So even no, if right. I'm not using no, no. Google, I can go to S3 bucket and, and access my source code? No, your source code is with App Engine. Because we are using App Engine, right? Huh. Your source code is with App Engine, but if you want to use data, like I'm, I showed you parse right now, right? Huh. So your sensitive data will not be with us. Your sensitive data will be with uh, parse. Or if you want to use Amazon S3, your sensitive data will be in Amazon S3. So that's the backend which uh, you, you can decide on which backend you want. But the source code is with App Engine, which is also equivalently secure and uh, uh, well tight information there. You, you, uh, I think App Engine also, you must be knowing, it's almost as similar to Amazon only. Suppose I don't, I decide to go completely with Amazon. Okay. And I don't want App Engine to be there. In okay. that case, where does my source code reside and who has rights to it? Legally speaking, I should have rights to it because I created it. Yes, definitely. You only have rights. No one else can come to your space and then uh, get your con unless you have made it a public project. If it's a private project, only you have uh, that information with you. No one else can see that project. No one else can fork that project. Nothing. Nothing is possible. You, no one can see that project actually. So the private project is mainly made for that purpose. It's mainly made for enterprises to create a project so that they can keep it private and then once they've given it to the customer, then the customer can decide whether that uh, public project is to be made public or not. But right now, all our information is connected to the App Engine. So all this, the, the content which you see here on the cloud, which you develop on the cloud, is on App Engine. Because we are connected to App Engine. Yeah, so this is staff. So I can go and see. Uh, the staff which is present here. 
Any more questions? Okay, so I, for the users which you saw there in the parse page, right? I was just showing. So these these are the users which are there. So I can see that these are these are the various users which I have. I can even go inside any user. You say current. So I can see that it's a person, and I can edit that information. You can see jobs. These are the various companies. So all these companies is also fetched from the cloud, from Pars, so that you can uh, directly see what are the information about the company. And also we are working, uh, though we have all the connections with these different type of connectors, we are also working in our own backend, so that we can, uh, we don't want uh, you to go somewhere else and get any uh, solutions. We are developing our own in-house backend uh, with uh, Heroku and. Uh, uh, the Heroku, so that we can give you the backend from our side itself. And as in case the prices also will reduce there, you don't have to go to Amazon and pay high prices there. Okay, thank you. Sir.